I'd like to introduce Debbie from England, who has multiple sclerosis. Welcome, Debbie. Hello, Linda. Could you tell me when you first started to notice MS symptoms? Um, it was actually in um, my mid-twenties, which is um, almost 20 years ago. Um, and I, I just became very, very ill after a bad, bad bout of flu and was misdiagnosed as having ME. Mm -hmm. um, was mis carried on being misdiagnosed for all that length of time, up until about five or six years ago when I had problems with my hands, which weren't working properly, balance. Um, I was getting very bad um, muscle cramps. Um, my brain wasn't working and I couldn't understand language, things like that, and other neurological symptoms. Shoulder froze up, and at that time, because I trained in holistic therapies, I realised something neurological was going on, and so I asked for a neurological consult when I was diagnosed about five or six years ago as having MS rather than any. Mm -hmm. Was that a relief to actually get a diagnosis as a name well, to what? Yeah. Yes, a huge relief, really, in many ways, because um, I'd had, when I was first ill and diagnosed with ME, I was actually in a wheelchair. I was very, very ill for about, oh, half about for about three years. Um, and my, my, I had a lot of cognitive symptoms, which were really very difficult to cope with, mm -hmm. um, language issues, um, just basic being joined up thinking was completely impossible. Mm -hmm. um, and... As a consequence of that, experienced secondary depression and was diagnosed as being um, having ME and being a depressive and was basically ignored by the medical profession and also given short shrift whenever I needed any help because I was a depressive and I was, I was basically thrown on the scrap heap like a lot of people with ME. Oh. Um, and so I had, a, I had a very difficult time and you know, I was sent to a psychiatrist and all kinds of things, until finally I, I decided that the medical profession um, really weren't worth the time I was giving them, and there were actually any of the medications they were giving me were making it worse. Their opinion of me and their attitude towards me was very damaging to myself, self-worth, and yeah. you know, like the way I felt about myself. And so I'd actually abandoned the medical profession completely, and was I, I managed my health holistically. And actually got myself out of a wheelchair, got myself back to a level of functioning, but was never back to the way I was before I, I became first ill. Mm -hmm. um, and but I had all these ongoing symptoms like fatigue that were just floor and elephant um, that they put down to being a depressive and needing to get out more and get on with life and stop all this being sick kind of approach. Um, and also cognitive issues, um, language deficit and language... Um, dysphasia, which often meant that I couldn't read material, couldn't understand written material, couldn't communicate verbally, um, and it still happens now, but to a much, much lesser degree, whereas if I, if I got tired, I just couldn't understand any kind of verbal language or communicate, um, and I would, I would be talking gibberish and not know I was talking gibberish. I thought I was speaking sensibly, and then my husband would look at me blankly, and I'd go, Oh yes, okay. So those words aren't coming out today, or I couldn't find, I couldn't structure sentences, couldn't you couldn't find the right word on occasions, um, and also things like I, my memory, which is 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 better now since I started the LDN, but the my memory was also very poor, uh, and and my concentration was very fractured. So all those things were going on along with ongoing. Um, things like muscle and nerve pain, which would come and go in quite strong bouts, and um, vertigo, dizziness, which would sometimes just floor me for a week, uh, and fatigue, this ongoing fatigue that would just um, lay me out most of the time. So I, was, I had all those ongoing symptoms um, and receiving no help um, from the medical profession. Um, and so I learned to manage, manage it myself until I kind of met my health. I, I decided I was going to... Um, do some more courses and do some more training and really start into holistic therapy or work, which I adore. I'm, I'm trained in a lot of therapies. And the increase in the workload just overloaded my system and I had a major relapse and shoulder froze up and all these other neurological stuff started happening and that's when I was diagnosed. So it was a huge relief to lose this um, 
for want of a better word than without denigrating anybody else, this nutter tag, because, you know, you're mm-hmm. tossed on the scrap heap of being a nutter, needing to get on with life. And so I lost that. And then suddenly all these doors opened where I was actually receiving support and help and explanations of why things were happening. It also made sense then because all the symptoms I'd had, which didn't fit with ME, fell into place. So in a way it was a great relief. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was quite cathartic because I could let go of a lot of the negative stuff that I'd I'd developed in myself and negative self-opinion that I'd kind of taken on from other people with having this label of having any and really just being a depressive, you know. So it it was, yes, a big... That was a very long way to say, yes, it was a big... (laughs) (laughs) Um, But how did... Sorry, how did you hear about LDN? I was... um, having a really tough time and um, went searching for something um, which which might help me. But well, I actually came across it by accident because I was having a tough time with some symptoms that at that time my, my neurologist said weren't MS, um, things like speech difficulties, um, memory loss, cognitive issues. Um, I have since changed my neurologist on the advice of other people because she was appalling. I mean, things like she said that swallowing difficulties and choking fits had nothing to do with the MS, um, which, of course, we all know is complete rubbish. It's mm. absolutely due to the MS. Um, and I was actually searching to, find, to research what was going on with me if these symptoms weren't MS, and I came across LDN on the, is it the MS Resource Centre's website? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, found that, and I thought, well, that sounds interesting, but I'm very drug intolerant, so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't that keen on taking anything. Um, but I thought, well, it's worth researching. So I, I did some more um, surfing, and uh, and it was just on the net. <coughs> and then I bought um, a, the book, The Promise of Naltrexone, um, and thought, hmm, this is worth, worth pursuing. Um, and so started to, to just kind of generally have a think about it. I thought about it for a long time before I actually started taking it. Um, um, but that's a whole other story. Mm-hmm. So how did you manage to obtain a prescription for LDN? Oh, that was good fun, yes. Um, well, first of all, um, tried my first neurologist, and that was an outright no. Just, we don't prescribe that. That was it. That was the sole length of the conversation. And then when I got my new neurologist, um, my second one, he, he said, no, we have, uh, the neurologist in Greater Manchester has decided that we will not prescribe LDM because there, there are insufficient studies and scientific proof that it does any work. But I'll give you gabapentin, which is a horrendous drug. I'm sure you've heard of it. Mm-hmm. We'll give you that, even though that has toxic side effects and um, is only effective, I think, I think, in 20% of the patients that they actually prescribe for, for no <sighs> pain. Um, and it's horrendously expensive, too. So it's happily dis- And it's also not on label for MS, which was his other argument, that LDM was not on label for MS. But he'd happily prescribe me all this other stuff that I ha- And also um, amyltryptamine, which I've reacted to very badly in the past. He'd give me that for the pain, but he wouldn't give me this non-toxic, cheap, generic drug. So um, I went back to your site, actually, and um, it was one of my, my favourite sites when I was Googling around. found the, um, uh, it was a little sign that had been posted, Clinic 158, it will now prescribe LDN, because my GP also wouldn't prescribe it. But he was, um, he came from a, a, a position of, he knew nothing about LDN, he wasn't happy with his knowledge of MS sufficiently to be able to prescribe something like LDN off-label. And he was worried that perhaps I was grabbing hold of straws and he didn't want, he, w- he would prefer me to go to somebody who knew what they were doing with it rather than give it to me inappropriately. So I didn't mind his, his response uh, at all. Um, and so I got in touch with Clinic 158 and, and Andy McCall's been looking after me ever since. Mm-hmm. Only thing is, he's not taking on any more patients, so I think we're going to have to take him out of that, if you don't mind. Not at all, not at because, all. He's uh, a lovely man. He is a lovely man, and he'd get quite upset. So I'm sorry, Simon, that bit's going to have to come out. Yeah, 
Simon's the one who's editing it. But oh. that's fine. We 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 can we can take that bit out. Um, okay. So if you can say, because um, we obviously that bit's going to have to come out. If yeah. when I I'll ask you the question again. Um, where and if you can just add, you had to obtain a private prescription. Okay. okay. How did you manage to obtain a prescription? Well, after my neurologist refused me and my GP refused me, I, I basically got a private prescription. And where did you have your private prescription filled? Dixon's um, in Glasgow. They, they are wonderful people, do a superb job. Thank you, they are, aren't they? They are. Um, okay. So I said, um, as well. God, let's keep going. Um, <laughs> Don't ever play this back to me. I'll die. <laughs> I'll play it back to you when it's edited and it'll look really posh. <laughs> when you first started LDN, did you have any introductory side effects? Yes, I did. Um, I felt it was very peculiar. I got about ooh, about 10 days of really bad insomnia, which was quite difficult to cope with because um, insomnia is one of the things that I've had since I was first in my 20s. Um, so I have to actively manage my sleep regime. But then after about 10 days, that wore off. Um, and I had like two weeks of feeling okay, and then two weeks where it was like my immune system f uh, kind of switched on or changed. I felt quite fluey. Not terribly bad, but, you know, off and scruffy around the edges. Mm -hmm. And that happened um, for the first three months because each month we increased the dose by 0.5 uh, a, a, a milligram. Mm -hmm. And that happened for the first three months. So we left. After three months, we left it at the same dose for a couple of months. And then when I increased it again up to 4.5, it was fine and I didn't get any symptoms at all, any side effects at all. Um, but I am very drug intolerant and so uh, any uh, I, I, for me to get off lightly like that, was, was I, I was quite surprised I didn't get any worse side effects. Um, mm -hmm. so, that, so that was all really. How long did it take before you started to notice improvements? They were subtle at first, and because I increased it, the, the dosage quite slowly over, uh, you know, months. Um, I would say about three months, um, mm -hmm. and it was subtle because it was cognitive. It affected my cognitive function first, um, and I suddenly realised that I could speak more easily. That my language flow was much easier and much better. And I didn't have these uh, episodes where people would be talking to me and all I could hear was the noise and not understand the words. And that was quite significant. And I also realised that my memory was getting a lot better and I was able to focus more uh, and remember that I actually had gone out for bread <laughs> instead of coming home with apples um, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, so that, I'd, I'd say about three months and it was the cognitive side that you know was affected first. So what would you say LDN has done for you? Um, it hasn't been a miracle drug, um, but it has improved my cognitive function and language use um, and reading as well. Um, I find it easier to understand what I'm reading um, because, the, I mean, in the past there have been weeks or periods of days and weeks where I've just not been able to read because I couldn't understand what I was reading, which, considering I have a degree in education and used to teach kids, was a bit disconcerting. Um, um, but definitely cognitive function, language use, memory, um, general level of robustness, um, stamina is better. Um, though my energy is still low, I still get um, very bad fatigue, which is the biggest problem I have. It, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm on more of an even keel. And if I rest appropriately and actively manage my, my activity, um, and balance it with rest, I'm on a much more even keel. So I'll recover more quickly if I get overtired, which is something which is quite novel after years of being floored for a week for doing very little sometimes. It, it, that's a great improvement. Um, nerve pain as well. I'd say that the nerve pain is a lot better. Um, and I'd say, that, that I think the main thing for me is that uh, for a long, long time, especially when I was first diagnosed, um, about four or five years ago, I would often feel very fluish, you know, as if my immune system was kicking off for no apparent reason. And if I got tired, I would often feel as if I had a flu coming on and feel just awful. 
um, just from that kind of immune feel. And that has really gone, apart from when I get a little flow, like just this week, I've overdone it, my own fault, um, and I've, I'm kind of getting a bit of a flow, so I'm taking it easy. And I felt very kind of immune responsive then, but it's died down much more quickly than it ever did before. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, I just generally don't feel as ill as I did, apart from when I overdo it, which is my own fault because I'm mismanaging. So I think that's probably most important for me. What would you say to other people who've got MS who are contemplating trying LDN? Check it out. Check out an LDN. Um, don't don't grab a miracle cures, but this can certainly help. I think it can help a lot of people that are, are often stuck in a rut and stuck in a deep dark pit and taking medication, which just makes things worse. My brother is in that pit. He has MS, um, and he's in a progressive MS, and he's just being poisoned by so many toxic drugs that are just taking him further and further down down into the pit. So check it out. Make sure that you don't, you, you're willing to give it a go. Um, don't expect miracle cures, you know, a week after taking it. Some people do get that response, but a lot of people won't. So give it a good long time, you know, maybe six months to, to see what will happen with it. Um, and then just have a go at it with an open mind um, and see where it will take you because you might be really surprised. Well, thank you, Debbie, very much for sharing your experience with us.